So hi, this is class two for basic uh, Python game development. Um, so we have our instru new, new instructor who um, wasn't available last week. Just say hi to everyone, Maria. Um, just say hi. Hello. Yes, hello. Today's agenda will involve um, some slides covering these items, lists, tuples, if and else statements, while in for loops. Then we'll run a demonstration and code together our first game. Um, and finally, we'll have a nice and fun blue kit at the end. Is everyone ready? Okay. First, let's discuss lists. Lists are a data structure where you can store multiple items in a single variable. You can access these items using an index in their list. They have a defined order and they allow duplicates. Let's take a look at our example. We have the list one, two, three, four. Um, by the way, uh, unlike lists in other languages, you can have um, multiple different data types in the list. You can have both strings and integers, like both the things in brackets, or like uh, other stuff. Uh, this is because Python is a more flexible language in that matter. To get them, uh, you initialize this list with this. And to get a list, the item in the list, you can call in the square brackets like a number. Now, the index of this, you'd think it's one, two, the first is one, the second is two. But the first one is actually zero. The second one is one. This is because the indexes start from zero and this uses zero-based indexing lists. They're pretty useful. And if you take a look at the cheat sheet, Alex, you can send the, cheat, the link to the cheat sheet. Um, it's on the Google Classroom. You can see an implementation of the list. Um, Maria or Alex, feel free to send the thing in. Yep. Number list zero. Thank you, Alex. The link. Um. Additionally, there are many other stuff you can do to a list. In these slides, we have like um, a screenshot from the W3 schools, which uh, you can uh, do many methods to the list. You can add stuff to the list, clear a list, copy a list, um, count the stuff, and so on. The most important one, I think, is append because you, if you want to add uh, items to the end of the list, that's the thing you want to do. Okay, something to keep in mind is when it says like adds or removes, uh, that means like when you call a function, it, it does something to the list that you inputted uh, or done, right? But uh, when it says returns, um, then it's actually going to be a value that you can use. Um, yes. Thank you, Maria, for uh, uh, sending the link to the um, thing and also your sideways, but that's okay. Here's a bonus slide on tuples, Alex, you can present. Okay, so these are kind of like lists. Uh, you can store multiple items with a single variable and they can be different types. Uh, but you can't change, these are unchangeable. Uh, you can't add or modify it. So yeah, here's some examples on how to use it. It's pretty straightforward and similar to lists. Once you made a tuple, you ain't able to change the tuple. And you can't change it afterwards. You can make like a copy and then there are some uh, tuple methods, but you can go look them up yourselves if you ever end up dealing with tuples. So just so like keep in mind that they're a data type. Yes. Did nobody get the Squid Game reference? Tyler, stop. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh wait, I'm sorry. These guys shouldn't be watching Squid Game. It's R rated. All right, all right Tyler. Let's move on. Let's move on. My bad. My bad. Um, sorry. Now, Maria, um, feel free to present the if and else. So sometimes in programs, we don't really want to let all of the code run. So we want only parts of them to run. And when we want to do that, we use if, elif, and else. And 
if the condition of if is satisfied, the code that is under the if statement and indent it would be executed. And then we would check the elif to see if that condition is satisfied and then execute the fun uh, code within the elif if that's satisfied. And then we would go to else if neither of those uh, conditions are satisfied. So for if and else statements, when you want to actually control the flow of the code, you would have to put your code indented to indicate that it's nested within the condition. And so nice, I'd like to congratulate everyone who um, took a look at today's, uh, did the homework and also uh, included if loops inside. It was very well done. Um, and they checked the condition if and then the else. And so good job. Next, I wanna present logic operators that can go on with the and. These ones are a bit more complex. Let's start with, um, these are logical and and logical or. By the way, if you just got here, um, you can take a look and open the cheat sheet right here. The, oh, wrong link, wrong link, wrong link. Um, let me try that again. Okay, everyone open the cheat sheet. Um, the cheat sheet has like a uh, useful implementation for the and and or. Basically and means that if A and B are true, that means A and B is true. And if A or B is true, that means as if any of A or B is true, you can, is true. Now this looks a bit complex. So let's make it a Venn diagram. Tomato, apple. If tomato, tomato or apple means either either of these three makes it true. If you have uh, conditions that satisfy the uh, tomatoes or apples. Now, if you want tomatoes and apples at the same time, then we get uh, the center one only because those are the ones that belong to both tomatoes and both apples. They're both fruits, they're both round and smooth skinned or would mean that um, it could, anything that has uh, red flesh is a tomato, mushy, savory, white flesh, firm, sweet, fruit, round, smooth skinned. And so the going back, oops, going back to here, this would mean like um, if it's inside of a tomato, this tomato circle, we can say that it's a zero, uh, sorry, a one for the A, if it's inside the apple circle, it's in like the one for the B. And we put these options together and see our results. This is like um, the basics of logic operation with logic operators. Since that might have been a bit confusing, does anyone have any questions before we move on to discussing loops? All right. Um, uh, okay, Alan. Do you have a question about this? Um, feel free to ask. Um, on the cheat sheet, you can see how we've implemented this um, and or or. Afterwards, we'll uh, do it. In fact, if you, want to, if you want me to do so now, I can show you how we've implemented these and and or. We're basically here just checking if condition, multiple conditions are true. If either tomato or apple is true or both, that means we can, um, we do, uh, it is a true, the overall statement is true. If both of them are true and that's the and, then the center column is true. This is more of like a bonus thing to know and it's a bit difficult to master at first. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Let's move on to while loops. So for while loops, the condition is right after the while keyword. And what is indented beneath the while loop would keep on running until the condition is satisfied. So for the example that's on the right, you can see that uh, what would be printed would be from zero to four. Yep. And one, zero, one, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Once it's at five, the while loop knows to exit. 
can you go back to oh, oh shoot i missed it. yeah i skipped it on accident oopsies so this is a for loop it's very similar to a while loop and it's commonly used to either run for a specific number of times or iterate through a list or string so if you only wanted to run a specific number of times, you would use in range, and then whatever is in the range parentheses is the number of times you want to run the code. And okay. so basically, the range function is actually going to, uh, it's a function, right? And it's returning a value of uh, all the numbers up to the number that you put in. Uh, so, yes, um, they can have three parameters, A, B, and C. The A, A comma B is the range. Um, the a, it starts at A, keeps increasing until if it's um, greater than or equal to B, that means it can exit out of the for loop. The C is the increment, but how many it increases every time. It doesn't always have to increase by one every time, it can increase by two maybe even three, just however much you want. Does everyone know uh, how to do a for loop now? Is that good? Okay, let's go to the next one. Let's try to find a common bug in this while loop. Um, so this one, I'll give you a minute to think about it. You can write your answers in the chat. What is wrong with this while loop? Um, Think about it as like a block of code. Um, run through the lines one by one and think about what they do. Feel free loops to send your answers. In the oops, one second. I accidentally pressed a button on my mouse. We're back. Okay. Feel free to answer in the chat um, what the common bug with this thing is. Okay. Give you all a small hint right now. That was a confusing hint. But, um, All right, a minute has passed. So let me share, let's share with you the common bug. Maria, you can say it. So the common bug right here is this would create an infinite loop. Since the counter of X is not being incremented, then it would never satisfy the condition of being like uh, more greater than or equal to five. It would always be less than five. Yeah, the important thing about Python, uh, we don't have those semicolons to determine like the end of lines. We don't have brackets to determine like the end of, for example, like a Java if function. So basically what we what we have to do is like, you know, like uh, indent. And then that's going to tell you what's inside these while statements or for loops or if statements. I personally think indentation is good for society. I mean, oh, okay. Yeah. It makes I, the code look clean too. So I like, yeah. Indent, yeah, it makes it neater. Indentation. Like, please pay attention to that when you're coding Python, especially. Yeah. And I would still advise you to do it if it's not Python, so. Yeah, also if you're getting errors in your code, that's also something you should check for. In it loop. Yep. Now we'll move on to the implementation aspect. Um, before we do our first game, the number guessing game, let me go over the, uh, I'll pause my share screen for one second, the data, the data structures in like our cheat sheet today. First of all, we have a list. Um, we're accessing all of the numbers and we have all the numbers and we're accessing the first item. 
Next, we have the tuples. Um, yeah. And this is an example of an if, elif, and else statement. We're checking if a condition is true. In this case, we're referring to the second squid two. Zero, one, two. And so this one is true. Uh, the squid can, if it's true, then like the, we print that the squid condition is true. Now, this is where our logic comes in. We use the and and the or. We have this in parentheses and or. Let's um, evaluate them one by one. If the condition is true, condition is true, and the squid is false. We know the squid is true. And so um, this one is gonna yield false because they are not both true. So we have a false, false. And um, now let's take a look at this second part. If the condition is false and the squid is true, we know that the squid is true, but the condition right here um, is true not false. And so since they're not both um, true, we know that those are both false. Now we can evaluate the or at the center of all of this. If they are um, or, false, false, it is definitely gonna be a false. And so we are not gonna print one true, one lie. Similarly, since um, they're not both false, we're not gonna print this. Instead, this leaves one more option left, them both being true. And so we print both true. This is definitely not the simplest way to just check if they're all both true, one, one right, one wrong. But we did this so that um, it would be easiest um, to demonstrate the and and the or and the logic combined all together. Does anyone have any questions right now? Next, we have the for loop. Um, let me actually run this code. So for uh, from the start to the end, um, zero to five, not including five, and we increment by one, we're gonna print I. And as you can see here, we have stuff from zero, one, two, three, four printed out. Next in our while loop, while our start is less than our end, we print the start and increment it, doing the same thing, zero, one, two, three, four. We could do something else, like we could do five to zero and minus one every time. Let's see how that goes. Zero, one. Oh, wait, let's, we have to reverse that while well, start is greater than end. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, four, three, two, one. This is how you can use uh, for loops and while loops to run through a series, uh, to loop through uh, code multiple times. Now uh, we'll share with you the number guessing game. I'm gonna take one second to post it on our uh, Google Classroom. So in the chat, I will be sending the link to the number guessing game. Here you go, oops, one second. This is our number guessing game. Let me resume my screen sharing. We are gonna make this together. Sorry, just like a garbage truck just passed. We are trying to create a random number guessing game where the user tries to guess a number between one and 100. They have six tries to try to guess the number. After each guess, the code must check four things. Wait, wait. Check if the try number, um, who put this? Let's not do this. Um, if the but guess- don't we only have six tries? Oh, wait, yes. Oh, I, I thought it was like um, the guest number. Um, yes. Oh, wait, that actually helps. Thank you. Check if the try number is within six. Just to try. If the guess is higher than the actual number, 
print like too high. Otherwise, if it's too low, print that is too low. If the guess is correct, um, print a victory message. Now, before this, um, we can also actually, we have one more uh, function for the if loop. We can check in the if loop if numbers are greater than each other. Like if one is greater than two, print one greater two. If it's not, else print one not greater two. I can English very well. Yes. And as you can see, after our math and calculations, we can see that one not greater two. Now with this insight, we can um, implement, try to implement the code. Uh, I'll give you a moment to think about how to implement part, uh, part one. So welcome to the, the user to the game. I'm gonna create a new REPL. Um, all of you guys can create a REPL, my REPLs. Create Python number guessing game. Oops. By the way, if you want and want to ask any questions about the stuff we covered earlier, you can ask anytime. Number guessing game. And now we want to generate a random, a random number. This one is actually more of a bonus challenge. How do we generate a random, random number? I'll give you all like one minute to try to figure that out. I started a timer for one minute. Yes, absolutely. Use the internet. The internet is your friend. Yeah, but if you if you see like some overcomplicated code, like this isn't like that kind of silence. So All right, one minute is almost up. Um, first of all, let me type in a welcome message. Um, welcome. Welcome, uh, welcome to my guessing game. And it's only fair that we can type in the rules. You have six tries to guess a number between one and 100. Good luck. And let's just add a new line for good time's sake. And now that begs us the question, how do we generate a random number? Does anyone have any ideas? Um, oh shoot, I'm spoiling it a bit. Did anyone come up with anything on how to uh, generate a random number? Okay. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Right. Uh, import random, Alex. Um, that is right. Um, import random. Alex, do you, would you like to share with us what imports do? Um, Okay, sorry, sorry. Um, I was talking to my brother, brother Alex. Um, we can use imports in Python to uh, get modules that we uh, have not, that are not in the default Python library. I prepared this from earlier. This one is like outside of the uh, Python library. So we'll need to input it, sorry, import it. The random thing has several functions. I'll zoom in a bit to help. It uses a thing called the Maracene Twister, um, which is just a fun thing to know. 
But the thing we want in question is a function called randint. Yes, uh, thank you, Maria, about the new line thing. It returns a random integer n, such as a less than or equal to n less than or equal to b. And so if we want a random number between 0 and 100, we could just do random number is equal to random dot randint to call the function 0, 100. For now, let's print it out on print ran. Ninety-six, sixty-one, two, two, eighty-four, sixty-three, fifty-one. As all of you can see, we are printing out um, usually different numbers, and it is very random. And so we've uh, successfully complete, uh, completed part one of our um, number guessing game. Here's a bonus question. Um, once everyone has opened up. Uh, just to follow up, I'll put this document right here. Everyone should open it. Um, now we'll implement part two for like the uh, number guessing game. Does anybody have any ideas on how to implement part two? Let's see if this is shared correctly. Yeah, it is. For part two, we kind of simulate one guess. And so if we want to do a guess, then uh, we can, I'll give, sorry, okay. I'll give you one minute to, one to two minutes to think about it. In the meantime, I'll share, um, I'll keep sharing the instructions so all of you can view it. So um, we're spending these two minutes to go over like um, part two. Sorry, not go over, think about part two. If you wanna guess, what kind of stuff do you need? In the meantime, I'll actually go back to our slides. Um, something we'll need, I, something I forgot to cover earlier. Keep thinking. Let's um, get a little refresher on getting user input and printing it out. If you want to impulse input something like what's your birthday, we can uh, type something and then we submit submit it. And now this will display display a string as a prompt, like um, what's your birthday? None of your business. And your input will now be in the variable birthday. And so this can might be able to help you out with number um, part two, project time. Yeah, we are trying to implement one guess. And so what do we do when we're trying to get a guess from the user? I hope, um, I hope I'm speaking clearly, um, yeah. Okay, our two minutes is up. Um, now um, I'll kind of show you how to implement a guess. But first of all, does anyone have any ideas how we can uh, kind of make the user guess a number? It is a bit difficult and tricky. So let's first make a variable called guess, which is equal to um, an input. And now we know that guess is a number. So um, remember, we'll have to convert it to an integer. Keep that in mind. This is going to be important. Input. What do we want to ask them? Guess a number between one from one to 100. Let's see what we do. Guess a number, five. 
let's add a bit of one space to make it look a bit more pretty. And we should also print out the welcome statement. Welcome to my guessing game. You have six oh, tries to guess my number between one and a hundred. Good luck. 81. Guess a number. This is the number. 50. Now we've made like a, a guess and now we have to decide what to do with the guess. Let's look back in the requirements. Check if the try is within six. This gives us um, a motivation for another uh, variable, try. Um, so try number, which is equal to, um, we start off with zero tries and so it's zero. We wanna check if we have less than six tries. So if try, actually off the bat, we wanna check if try number less than eight. We wanna actually create it before um, we make the guess. And so let's um, put the guess a bit after we create the try number. If the try number is less than six, then we can continue on with the code. Otherwise, we can just um, uh, continue or do nothing. We can do this by doing the pass function, pass. If it is less than six, um, we can continue on and process it. Let's go back here. If the guess is higher than higher, lower, and correct. Here's a quick question. What kind of loop can we do to process this higher, lower, or correct accurate? We covered a specific type of loop that can handle this type of logic. And so you can type it out in the chat or say it out loud. What type of um, loop can handle this? Um, correct, higher, lower, or correct? Uh, Maria, you're sideways again. <laughs> Sorry, the camera is just sideways, you know. We can actually use our if statements. Um, if statements. And so uh, if statements, if, elif, and else to implement this. If the guess is higher than the actual number. How can we um, uh, check if like the guess is higher? Guess is, let's set up an if, elif, and an else. All right, could anyone uh, guess what conditions we need to put in? All right. Yes. Any guesses, any takers in the chat? By the way, feel free to follow along with this in your own Repolit. Um, we're collecting some submissions afterwards. Uh, feel free to. Okay. We can, um, we just check if it's greater than or less than the actual result. We wanna check if, if it's greater than the random number, then it's too high. If it's less than the random number, then it's too low. Right here, we're gonna to print too high. Right here, we're gonna to print too And finally, we're going to print and print just right. Yep, too high, too low, just right. 
Now we've created our guessing system. Welcome to my guessing game. You have six tries to guess my number. Guess a number from one to 100. I have a feeling it's 16, where is it? Right. Let's see, it's 50. That's too high. Let's try one. Actually, let's fix this a bit. Our random number should be from one to 100, not zero to 100. That is my bad. It looks like we've successfully implemented part two of our uh, assignment. Now we'll use loops to make multiple guesses. And so does anyone have um, anything in mind on how we can use loops to make multiple guesses? I'll give you a hint. What number are we not using right now? Sorry, sorry, not what number. Uh, what variable are we not using? One of the, we're not using one of the variables in particular. And that variable is like the try number. You are out of tries. The number was, yes, that is the output. We are not quite using this try number variable the way we want. If we want to keep going um, until our tries are less than six, why not? Let's make a while loop instead. While try number less than six, let's add one time um, um, try number. That way, when it reaches six try, oh, let's zoom out a bit. That way, when it reaches six tries, um, we can uh, exit out of the while loop. In addition, this else is not needed, um, and we'll let's find a different way to check if we're out of tries. Let's make a variable called win. At first, we're not winning because we have not guessed the number. Where can we put this win variable so that we can make it so that it wins? We can yeah. put it in the out, oh, sorry, Alex. Fine. Never mind. Yeah, we can put it in the else. We can turn the win from the false to the true, back from the grave to the victory, so that when it reaches, um, if it wins, then uh, yes, then we can exit out. And so finally, we check if win. Oh, sorry, sorry. If not, if win is equal to false, that means we print out the losing statement. Otherwise, we print just right. Woo. Let's try this out. Before that, do you think there's going to be any bug in there? Is it? Do we have everything? We'll see. And by the way, we should com let's comment this random number out because um, when we're when the other users are playing the game, they're not supposed to know the number that we're gonna guess. Yeah. All right. But this is uh, Watson. So print statements can be very useful when you're doing a lot of like logic and math and stuff and like Oops. we need to be uh, asking the question every time so yeah. that is my bad when you're doing a lot of like math or logic and stuff uh print statements can be very good to see what exactly a variable is and what it's doing in your code in case you're having any problems Oh shoot, you're out of tries. The number was six. Six. Wait. Oh. 
random number instead of like the number of tries. We should output the random number. Now, what if we guessed like the number immediately? 75, it's too low. Let's try and kind of memeing this. Let's turn the debug and see if that wrong. If the number was 91, let's temporarily um, open this. 55. I guess it first try, but it keeps running. Does anyone know how to help it, how to solve this problem? If I guess it, but it keeps running. Yeah, feel free to like type it in the chat. I exactly. wanna I wanna see some solution from you guys. So how would we exit? We could type um exit here. Exit. Yep. Wait, like this. Let's try it. Um 45. Rapid. <laughs> REPL process died unexpectedly. Oh. Uh -huh. Okay, so here's the way you do it in another way to do okay, it. Okay, so this exit function seems to be manually like shutting this process down, which is actually not what we want. So we're getting out of this while loop, right? So break. What if we wish what what if we just um no no? What if we just change the conditions of the while loop also? Let's try break first. 89. Yeah. I believe yep. it's true. the yep. break works. Okay. The yeah. other way. Oh, sorry. That's a, that's a, that, okay. If you put that there, it's going to exit out of the while loop. Then here's another solution. We could write and um, win equal is false. If the number is six and we haven't won yet, that means we can still continue. If we win, that means it's going to break this while loop. Let's try this out. Oh, by the way, since when is a bit, you can also say not win. Yep. 63. And yeah. Now that we finish with this, congratulations. If you followed along, you've just coded your first Python game. You have uh, six tries to guess. All right, let's play this one more time and then we'll move on to our game. 37, 41. Yes! yes! Finally, I won. You guys need a walkthrough of the code, maybe? Just like a refresher. All right. So you start by printing the welcoming statement. This random module, all right, it's an external module um, which we're using to. Well, technically it's not random, but it's like a really big and unpredictable number. So it's pretty much random. Uh, then we've got number of tries and whether you won. This loops it if you haven't won yet and you have uh, less than six, you've tried less than six times. And now it takes your guess each time and then it checks if it's too high or too low or just right. If it's just right, it sets you to win. So um, then it exits the while loop. Uh, if it doesn't, then it increments it by one. Uh, and then after uh, this whole loop's done, if you haven't won, it prints that you're out of tries and the number was that. All right. Yeah. Um, are we good now? Okay. That is the demonstration. Um, where do you put the break? If you wanted to use the break instead of this, you could put the break after the else here. In, inside the else statement. Yes, inside the else statement. Because you want to exit uh, the loop. You don't want to keep guessing after you got it correct. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Finally, to end this off, we'll be playing a blue cat. Um, let me resume my screen share soon so that we can play a game together. By the way, Maria, Alex, feel I'm free to sure join it, the game. Wait, I'm what? I'm pretty sure it's pronounced blue cat. Um, oh, yeah, tell us not the best at pronouncing these things. Yeah. Um, it looks probably... like it's look it. Yeah. All right. We have this game. 
the game today will be um, deceptive dinos. I get to choose. Wait a second. How is this? Why is this not working? And as per um, one second, post. Oh, I'm I'm a silly man. Let's just have um. Yeah, a seven minute. Five, quick five minute blue kit and let's no five and I'll host it now. Oh, I muted the tab. Here, everyone join the blue kit and like the link I sent in the chat. Rivik, instructor Alex. We have like, um, I think, quite a few instructors here. Sorry, not instructors, students, like 10 ish. So I'll wait until like 10 people, uh, 12 to 13 people join. And yeah, we're good. And I'll start. Can you kick me? Which one are you? Andy, wait, Andy, which one are you? I don't, oh, I see. I kicked you. I'll send the join link in the chat. Um, in like, uh, yeah. There are like 15 people, uh, 15 students. There are 15 students now. And then we've got eight players, one of which is me. Yeah, guys, um, this is. I'll just do like uh, 30 more seconds. And then like... Yeah, guys, join up to the blueprint. Uh, link is in the chat. Uh, we're going to be testing you on your coding knowledge. All right. Ready? All right. Oh, we, we only got eight players, though. Yeah, but like the 30 seconds I've waited is almost up. So I assume everyone who wanted to join has already joined the king. And so that's like eight out of the students. I mean, that's the majority of the students. Answer your job is to answer questions, excavate or investigate, choose rocks to collect fossils, or um, cheat. Investigate if other players are cheating. Catch them, you take their fossils. That's pretty much the gist of the game. Most fossils win. Good luck. All right. Strut. All right, hey, instructor Alex, Andy the King, and all of this. Oh, we have Snake in first place, Snake in first place. And yes, oh, 150, Alex is in the lead. You know, this reminds me awfully a lot of like um, the Jurassic Park. Oh, that king investigated. Oh, he's not sus. All right, 
we have a nice leaderboard. Alex, Riddick, the Kings, and Hall, Hayes, Nate, Mutt, Pi, and Eli. Andy, wow, all right, a commanding lead. What just caught Andy cheating? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Andy goes down to fifth place. Oh. That's why you can investigate the other people. Go and investigate them. Black King just caught. Oh, St. Hall was cheating. This could be big. This could be big. This could be big. King is third. All right, the king is in first. I mean, Riddick. Honestly, my strategy for this is just spam questions. You can get a really good streak and like a really good bonus from the streak. But like, um, once you've lost a lot of the bonus from cheating, um, once bitten, twice shy. You like uh, disincentivize the cheat. Ooh, Sin Hall, the commanding lead. Can anyone catch up? Oh, Rithik is catching up. Alex in second place. Shocking, our instructor, our all powerful instructor in third place. Yeah. One person holds like one third of the wealth. That's more wealth and inequality than America. Wow. Sin Hall was such a commanding lead. He has almost like twice the amount of the second place person, more than twice of the third person, person in third place. And so, yeah, with like 40 seconds left, who will win? We're looking. Oh, St. Hall, the, the, just like, uh, wow, about like twice Andy's losses. This is like an impressive large lead. Oh, the king invested in Andy. What could happen? Oh, it's not cheating. What could be happening? Okay. It could be anyone's game. You never know. Oh, the king? Oh, what happened? His fossils dropped. Only must be he must have been cheating. Oh, and the game is over. The king comes on top. Wow. All right. GG. Nice. 72%, a lot of questions, um, a lot of bones. So good job, everyone. Um, thank you. Oh, yeah, for something that showed up in there was the modulo operator <laughs> in Python. It's like finding the remainder. Uh, it's probably, it's like- We didn't cover that. Um, yeah, we didn't cover it. But if you really want to know, it's like, for example, five, Mod two was the example that we had in here, right? Uh, so the remainder when five is divided by two is one. So that's how to do the mod in Python. And so our homework is to just finish 